Hey, how's it going guys? Jack, Matt, and James here with Toasty DIY, and today we're going to be teaching James, who's 13, how to build his first gaming PC. And this is the finished product. I think he did a really good job, and we're going to show you guys exactly how to build your first gaming PC if you're watching along at home, and also show you how well he did, and uh, yeah, it's not as hard as you might think to build your first gaming PC, and we're just going to go ahead and cut to that footage and show you how it wins. So we got an Asus Tough B650 Plus, so this will support Ryzen 7000 series, which is what we got here. It's a 7600X, 6 core, 12 thread, and it is a very good CPU. I think it's, uh, how much is this CPU right now, like three, four hundred? I think it's three hundred. And then you just kind of grab it by like the metal, and it can only go in one way. There's that arrow, yeah, there you go. So now you're going to push that down, and then yeah, don't, just use all of your hand for that. There you go, and then push, nice. Matt, good job installing the RAM. I did such a great job. <laughs> All right, SSD. Uh, that, I think it stays attached on that. Yeah. So you just gotta unscrew it until it's. We're teaching our yeah, we're teaching our future future replacement guys. <laughs> All right, so the mat. Yep. It's gonna push in. And then push down. Yeah, this part's a little complicated. So you gotta you see that plastic piece in the back? That's gonna hold it down. So you wanna push down in the NVMe. And then you're going to swing that latch over. And Matt, Matt might need to help you with this, but you might be able to get it. That part's pretty hard. Underneath this, there's like a little plastic cover right here. This will basically reveal the thermal heat, pad. Thermal pad, heat sink, same thing. And now this is this is probably the, the hardest part. Yeah, well, really one of the harder parts. So what we're going to install is the cooler that goes over top that CPU. So actually, with AMD, as you can see, these like latches right here are mounting hardware that most of the coolers will take advantage of. Not all of them, but most Heel. of them. All right. So this is going to go back in here. And then as you can see at the bottom, there's holes right there. So easiest way you can hold it that way if you want to. And then, and then I'll hook you up with that. Or I guess you have a screwdriver in one hand. All right, a little more, oh, that's good. Now, if you look at the block right here, you'll see how it has like a V on it. You wanna make sure the V is in the right direction, so upright. You kinda, of, it's like using your other finger to hold the bracket. You know what I'm saying? Like like push from the bottom to make sure it stays on. It's, it's like I said, it's, it's a little bit finicky. Nice and... and then, you know, a good test is you should be able to pick up like any cooler by your hand and it should stay on. This thing needs fans, so how Jackson explained it, the liquid runs through here and then you wick off the heat, but we need fans for that. So one thing too, keep in mind, I know I'm throwing a lot at you here, um, is you wanna make sure the cables, you, you have it right here, make sure the cables are in a good spot to run them right, and keep them out of the way. Um, and then you're going to line up all those holes. You see the holes right there. Yeah, you don't need to like really torque those down. You just get them you know, a little bit tighter than like hand tight. Um, so now we have to prep the case over there. And really the only thing we need to do inside the case, yes, right? Uh, yeah, you can take that off, that's that panel off, and the back. Yep, so we're just taking off some side panels. Matt and I always recommend just taking off both, you know, pretty much at the start of the build, because you're gonna have to get to the front and the back. We're gonna explain the types of power supplies real quick. There is modular, which this one is fully modular, basically meaning none of the cables are connected. So basically it'll allow you to just plug in what you need and not have extra cables. I can show you what a non-modular one looks like. Everything is just attached like this. And then if there's cables you won't need, you have to like hide them and stuff. It says PCIe on it. You can read what it is on the side. So PCIe is what powers your graphics card. Um, at this point, we might as well just see what that graphics card needs. I think it's just one. One A pin. And you're gonna plug it in to VGA, because VGA means graphics. air comes in through the bottom and out through the back. Perfect. All right, so you're gonna push that in and then you'll see in the back right here, you can tell where they had it screwed in in this case as a used case. Yep, there you go. Now you wanna see, there should be some power supply screws. Now one thing you need to be mindful of 
is some other boards have these IO shields, which basically you have to go ahead and plop into here. Newer boards come with it built in, so you don't have to worry about it. So keep that outside the yeah, case for now, outside James. Outside the case for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to plop the motherboard right there. Now you'll see, if I can get it lined up like that, there's these screw holes that'll line up where you can screw in the motherboard. There you go. Yep, just like that. Um, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna run it through here. We'll let you plug this stuff in. We'll plug in all the other like nitty gritty nitty stuff. So now what you're going to do is you're gonna make sure the clip, the, the actually you're on it, do these. You can help me if you want to, these little twisties. We're going to run these cords through here. You're gonna line up the holes on top of that, that the cutout, and basically you're gonna screw in the radiator to the All top. Right, so Matt will hold it, James, then you can screw it. it up to see where this part is going to line up with the back right here, if that makes sense. So as you can see, it's these top two right here. Okay, so you're gonna take the grass car back out. That's fine, those come off. Those little covers for the video out. All right, so what you're gonna do is take your screwdriver and unscrew these two screws. Those two? Yep. Yeah, let me see. Oh, there you go. Nice. Cool. So now it's in there. Make sure that's good and secure. Now what you're going to do is take those screws that you unscrewed and you're going to screw this in right there. I'll hold this card for you because you normally have to push it a little bit. There you go. So yeah, put it on the end there. There you go. All right, now let's power the GPU. You can come over here and I'll show you how to plug that in. So these characters are kind of weird. It has six pin plus eight. It's because some graphics cards only need six, but as you can tell, this one needs eight. <coughs> so you're gonna clip this together like this and kind of hold it. Yeah, like that. And then line it up and push. And there you go, that's it. Now for cable management purposes, we'll end up just like shoving some of this stuff in here. And then Jackson will give me like a zip tie and we'll zip tie this so you can hide it a little bit better and make it look mm -hmm. nice. But as far as the functional computer goes, it's good, like that's it. It's plugged in. Nice. All right, so quick final update. We got some RGB in it. So I actually ended up taking out all the proprietary stuff and putting in VTrue three pin ARGB uh, RGB headers. So now we got this nice RGB strip up top and then I put two more of those actually inside of the front panel. As you can see here, they're not the cleanest looking but it does make it to where you get quite a bit of light inside and now we have lighting up front again and it's all in sync, which is great. All right guys, so we just got done building the gaming PC. It turns on, it works. We still got a little bit of tweaking to do with the RGB, but other than that, it looks like it's gonna be a great gaming PC. What do you think in terms of difficulty? Uh, I don't think it was that hard, to be honest. Uh, usually the hardest for me was the graphics card, just getting it in the right place and all the screws. Definitely agree on that. The, probably the worst part to me is just getting all the screw holes lined up and Cable management's not always the funnest either. So yeah, if you guys want to, well, see future videos on Toasty DIY, be sure to subscribe and let us know how your first gaming PC build experience went. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment down below. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.